going on guys welcome back to the show today we're talking about the xbox 360 as always this is just my opinion so let me know your favorite games for the console in that comment box below now every Gears of War game deserves a position on this list, but for the purpose of this video I decided to choose the first game. Released in 2006, Epic Games have created a rich, enthralling universe that was guaranteed to draw you in, and kept you invested in what has to be one of the best stories from the last generation. Set on a fictional Earth-like planet named Sarah, the story depicts a war between two factions, the Locust and Humans, as they fight for control of the planet. What makes Gears of War so special is its gameplay that sees you darting from cover to cover as you take down enemies a chainsaw conveniently placed on your gun. I'm not gonna lie, as soon as I heard about that, I was sold. I mean, who doesn't want a gun with a fucking chainsaw glued to the bottom of it? As well as popularizing the now overcrowded cover based shooter, Gears of War introduced a very cool mechanic that sees you trying to reload in a specific time. Known as active reload, it really does lend a sense of urgency to the gameplay as you try to hit the perfect reload every time for a damage boost. Lost Odyssey is a Japanese role-playing game developed by Mistwalker and Feel Plus. Released early on in the console's life cycle, Lost Odyssey has come to be known as one of the best JRPGs of the last generation. Spanning four dual-layer DVDs, you know you're in for one hell of a journey. The story follows the escapades of Kaim, who is part of a group known as Immortals, and has unfortunately lost his memory. Throughout the game, he must confront his returning memories whilst trying to bring balance back to the various nations that make up the game's world. Featuring many staples of the genre, such as turn-based battles, random encounters, and navigation using a world map, all the ingredients are present for any longtime JRPG fan to get their teeth into. Okay, this is cheating. I know Skyrim is a multi-platform title, but if you're a console peasant like myself, the only way to play Skyrim on a console was to choose the 360 version, as the PlayStation 3 version was about as stable as a single mother on benefits. Developed by Bethesda and released in 2011, Skyrim offers the player an immensely huge gaming world that is filled to the brim with exciting tales of magic and glee. The story revolves around the player's character and their intention to defeat Alduin, the Nordic god of destruction and the first dragon. Dragon. Set 200 years after the events of Oblivion, Skyrim introduces a civil war between the Stormcloaks and the Imperial Legion, as you take on the role of a dragonborn, a mortal with the soul and power of a dragon. You're tasked with taking down Alduin, who is destined to destroy the world, and throughout the adventure you take on many types of different quests which all contribute to developing your character and improving your skills. Developed by Namco and released in 2007 exclusively for the Xbox 360, Ace Combat 6 sees a return of the classic arcade flight sim that sees you soaring through the skies and taking down enemies in style. Basically the ridge racer of flight sims. Ace Combat offers a unique take on the genre and is such a thrill to play. With a huge selection of planes and missions to take part in, you'll find it hard to become bored and run out of things to do. Now what made Ace Combat 6 so special was the inclusion of a multiplayer mode that pits you against up to 16 players as you try to conquer the skies. Upon release, the game was received very well amongst the gaming media and proved there was life left in the Asian franchise. That is until they went all Call of Duty with Assault Horizon, and the less said about that game, the fucking better. If there's a Ridge Racer game released for a console, which I do a video on, it is always going to have a place on the list. As many of you know, Ridge Racer is one of my favorite franchises, and number 6 is no exception. Released in 2005, Ridge Racer 6 is just like previous titles, which have always focused on the twitchy, arcade gameplay that has made the series so well known. What makes this version so unique are the various game modes available to the player. The career mode, known as World Explorer, will see you racing adversaries on a variety of courses, whilst having the option to choose from around 130 cars. Another feature and first for the series was finally being able to take the race online and compete with up to 14 players as you whiz around corners and belt down straights. There really is nothing else like Ridge Racer. If you're looking for a more realistic driving experience, Forza and Project Gotham would win every time. Shadow Complex was originally released in 2009 and developed by Chair Entertainment. What makes this game so unique is the fact of it being one of the first profound games to appear on Microsoft's Xbox Live Arcade service. You take control of Jason Fleming who stumbles across a cavern whilst exploring with his girlfriend. In typical fashion, your girlfriend manages to lose herself and you are then tasked with rescuing her. As you explore the caverns, you come across an underground complex occupied by soldiers who are all kitted out with high-end technology. You must unravel the mystery 
history of the facility as you jump around and take out the enemies in what essentially feels like a love letter to Nintendo's original Metroid games. As the adventure unfolds, you will find various upgrades to your arsenal as you collect experience points that can be applied to your character's abilities, such as gunfire precision and damage resistance. Like I mentioned, if you're a fan of the old Metroid-style games, hell, even Castlevania, you'll find yourself right at home. Fable 2 is an open-world action role-playing game that was released for the 360 in 2008. Brought to us by our favourite designer Peter Molyneux, who seems to have a problem with telling the truth, Fable 2 takes place in the fictional region of Albion, and is set 500 years after the events of the first game. This was the first time in the series that you were able to choose between playing as a male or a female, and the feature was well received amongst fans, as you can imagine. The world in Fable 2 is truly open, with no set quest path to take, you will follow the life of your character. Character. As they grow, many things will change around you as your actions impact the region. At the start of the game, you will befriend a dog who goes on to become your trusty companion, and like in the first game where you would receive money for completing quests, the second outing sees you taking up various jobs in order to receive an income. You can become a blacksmith, a woodcutter, a bartender, an assassin. Seriously, there is quite a lot of choice which offers such great variety when playing the game. Received well amongst gaming critics of the time, Fable 2 is a great adventure that you you should definitely play. Halo 2 ended with one hell of a cliffhanger, and fans were eager to find out what would happen to our favourite cybernetically enhanced super soldier, Master Chief. Released in 2007 and developed by Bungie, the third release in the series set out to do just that. Featuring new weapons, vehicles and gameplay mechanics that were not present in the previous titles, Halo 3 felt fresh and returned to the tight first person action that had made the series so popular. The game is not without its faults though. Many were disappointed with the game's first next generation appearance and took issue with the game's graphics. Without natively rendering at a full HD resolution, many felt that Bungie had dropped the ball. I for one did not subscribe to the notion, as I believe there is always more to a game than the way it looks, and this is where Halo 3 excels, its gameplay. You will encounter many different enemies and turns in the plot that will keep you guessing right until the ending credits. Originally a 360 exclusive, Mass Effect would eventually make the transition to the PlayStation 3 and PC. Released in 2007 and developed by the gods themselves over at Bioware, Mass Effect is a third-person role-playing game set in a galaxy under siege. You take control of Commander Shepard as you step out into an adventure that will see you exploring the corners of the galaxy, trying to unravel the mystery of the Reapers, a powerful race of mechanical beings who repeat the cycle of wiping out all advanced sentient life every 50 thousand years. I know that's one hell of a premise and the game goes a long way in ensuring the player feels a part of the world and in true Bioware fashion, you are presented with various options that will change the course of the story, resulting in a truly unique adventure for each player. That is until Mass Effect 3 where it kind of all went to shit, but we won't talk about that today. Combat in Mass Effect is squad based. Each time you embark upon the battlefield, you will be aided by two computer controlled characters who will help you as you take advantage of their specific Abilities. A cover system is in place that will see you strategically darting from cover to cover as you take out the game's various enemies. Mass Effect is my favourite in the series and I would highly recommend playing it. If you haven't checked it out, now is the perfect time. Released in 2010 and developed by Remedy Entertainment, Alan Wake is one of those special games that only comes around once a generation. The story follows a novelist who is well known for his take on the world of thrillers and is on a quest to understand the disappearance of his wife during a vacation they shared in a small town of Bright Falls. The game is structured quite like a television series. It's set out over six episodes, each with their own degree of a plot twist and cliffhanger, and you'll find yourself relentlessly pushing on as the game twists and turns and reveals some of its darker themes. Alan Alan Wake plays like a third person shooter as you explore each environment and try to overcome the darkness, which is taking over humans, animals and various other objects. They are referred to as the Taken, which are the main enemies you will find in the world. They are protected by a shield of darkness which makes them impervious to attack. The only way to take them out is to shine your trusty flashlight which will burn the darkness away, in turn opening them for attack. Alan Wake was received positively amongst reviewers and has gone on to garner a passionate fanbase who are itching for a sequel. Well that was it guys, thanks for taking the time to check out this video, be sure to let me know your favourite games for the Xbox 360 down in that comment box below. As always, I will see you next time.